What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Think Outside the Blue Box. I'm Anthony Rivera. I'm the lead videographer and editor here at Blue Box Digital. And I'm joined today for a special episode by uh, Lex the Barber. Thank you, for, thank you for joining me, man. It's my pleasure. Uh, so today, today's a bonus episode. So we're, we're still going to release an episode on Sunday. But there, there's just been so much that we, we'd like to say and we have to get it out as soon as possible because it's something that um, has to do with something that just happened this past weekend. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot to say about it. This podcast is not really about, you know, celebrities and, and just gossip in general. But the reason why we want to talk about this is because it involves two of the people that we saw as uh, role models in our lives. You know, and, and uh, you and I have talked about Will Smith quite a bit on this podcast. Right. And, um, you know, he has he has great quotes. He's very inspirational. Uh, but he, he kind of let us down. You know, he kind of let us down this past weekend. And um, let, let's just jump right into it, man. Let, let's what, what, what are your thoughts on what, what, what happened? Well, the thing is, I wasn't really watching the Oscars at first. I was. I, oh, I know you were. <laughs> That's your Super Bowl. Um, yeah. I wasn't really watching the the Oscars, but I did wake up in the morning and happen to glance at Facebook and I saw it and I was like, what? Oh, so you didn't even see it the night. Uh, no. You saw it the morning after? I saw it the morning after and I thought it was a joke and I was like, that's why I called you. I was like, bro, what the hell happened? Yeah. No, for me, it was, it was crazy because I was actually watching it, but it, uh, in the United States, they have uh, the dump. They have a dump. So when, when something like that happens on a live feed, they just dump it. They just hit the dump button like the last 10 seconds that that are in the dump they get dumped you know they get they get thrown out and then it just kind of jumps so what we saw in the united states was uh you know him make the joke uh and then kind of he, he you can see that the crowd kind of reacted like oh you know the whole crowd the whole crowd reacted and you can see when it cuts back to chris that um that something something had gone wrong you know like we we saw the slap though like like it it we saw it, right. we saw Will Smith kind of <laughs> go up. Let, let's just start from the beginning. So Chris Rock is up on stage. For those people that haven't seen it, I don't I don't know anybody that hasn't. Um, Actually, I actually think this will be a perfect time to play the clip right now <laughs> yeah. so they can see it so they know what we're talking about. Yeah yeah I'll play the clip. Jada, I love you. GI Jane two can't wait to see it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That was, a, that was a nice one. Okay. And it was just a very quick, like, I love you, Jada. Uh, G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. And he was literally getting ready to move on. He had already started on his next joke. Mm -hmm. And what, what we saw was it cut back to Will and Jada, kind of a reaction shot. It was just like the producers wanted to see what uh, Will and Jada would, would react to the joke. And uh, we saw, you know, we saw Will actually laughing at the joke. And I think people have gone back and said uh, that, you know, yeah, he was laughing at the joke. And then as soon as he looked over at, at Jada and saw that she was upset, that's what kind of triggered him. But I think it was I think it was the the it wasn't just Jada. It was the crowd. I think it was the, the peers that were around him that kind of pressured him into like, holy shit, bro. Like, what are you going to do about this? Right. So as soon as it cuts back to Chris, it he starts to move on but then he realizes that will smith is getting up from a seat coming towards him on the stage and he's just kind of like okay what what the fuck is about to happen yeah right? i mean he kind of tried to play it off like whoa oh, like he thought he was going to come up and you know how celebrities sometimes get yeah. it behind the microphone and like say jokes back and forth at each other like making fun of each other and then go back and sit down mm -hmm. i think that's what he thought was going to happen i'm out here uh oh richard <laughs> Oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. I think that's why if you look at the video, he actually he puts his hand behind his back very respectfully and he leans in like he leans in. He thinks that he like Will Smith is about to tell him something like like he's about to get told a secret or something mm -hmm. like like keep your mouth shut or something. Right. So he wasn't expecting it at all. I don't think anybody was expecting no. that. No, and, and Will Smith, I, I've seen some videos that kind of analyze it, and he, he didn't even advertise that, that violence was about to happen. While he was walking up to the, the stage, he was looking down, 
He was looking down, he had a big smile on his face, and he wasn't even raising his hand yet, right? So as soon as he gets up to Will Smith, uh, or to Chris Rock, it was like at the very last second. I think it was like a split decision. It's like, okay, I'm up here now. What the fuck do I do? Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay. And he just went for it. That's it. And he, when he walks back <laughs> to his seat, he has the, 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 the look of pride. Like, I, yeah, I just stood up for my woman, right? Like he had this like, yeah, I'm the man and, and no, nobody's going to sit here and stop me. That, that, that's what, how I saw it. Um, and then whenever he sits back down, obviously everybody's in shock. Nobody knows what happens. Mm -hmm. And in the United States, it cuts. That's where it cuts. And then it, it, when it comes back, it comes back to just Chris just kind of standing there, just in shock, just looking around. And, and I didn't even know what the hell happened as far as the yelling or anything like that until I saw the video afterwards right. on, on, online. Get my name out your fucking mouth! Wow, dude. Yes. It was a GI Jane joke. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. I'm going to, okay? You know, it was it was such a shocking thing for one of my role models to do <laughs> when he's preached for love and and peace and and you know, he's such a good guy like it Let me tell you something. I I believe this didn't just come from last night. This is something that's been boiling up, but it was nothing to do with Chris and him. I it personally believe it has a lot to do with Jada. It was it was a lot, man. It was multi layered. There was a right. lot going on at the exact moment, and I think it all. But culminated. this goes all the way back to the time that Poot, that Tupac died. Because even in the red table, she's constantly bringing him down, saying that he's not the man that Tupac was. It's almost like she doesn't even want a real man. She just wants a thug. Uh, somebody who's willing to do something for her. What he did. Which is what he did. <laughs> yeah. What he did. And what disturbed me a little bit is the fact that one of the things that I learned from Will Smith a while back is never change yourself or who you are. Don't lose yourself. For anyone. For anyone. And I believe that's exactly what he did. He changed who he is. Because even the interviews with his own mom. Will Smith's mom even said. This is the first time I've ever seen him do something like this. Yeah. This is so out of character for Will. It is. So I know for a fact this is not him. This is something that I feel like he was pressured by Jada to do. In order for him to try to match up to become the man that she thought Tupac was. Yeah. So basically, everything he built himself up to, to become who he is today, he basically threw everything out the window to go back into the ghetto mode. The back, Philly came out. Back to, back to Philly. Philly came out, yeah. For her. Yeah. Because as a man... Somebody disrespects my wife, I would have had no problem, and I'm pretty sure like 90% of the people watching would have had no problem if he would have stood up, go up to him, go up to his ear, and be like, please take my wife's name out of your mouth. I think going Let up on stage. That would be the last, the last time I think going, about my wife. I think honestly going up on stage is, is disrespectful enough, mm -hmm. right? So when, when you're in an award show, these people are hosting it, right? They've, they've put a lot of work into the show for you. So you're just sitting there as an entertainer, as, as an, uh, an audience member, just enjoying what's happening. So just the fact that he walked up to the stage was, was already disrespectful enough. I think what he should have done is he should have stood up, got the attention of the audience first, and said, stop talking about my wife. Right. That's it. That was the and man thing to do. That would have been so much higher respected by yes. everyone. Yes, yes. Like, even from his chair. Please let that be the last time you talk about my wife. Exactly. And, and people have been saying. You can saying, talk about me all you want. Yeah. But don't talk about her. And that would have been so much more respected than to just try to go ghetto. Which is probably what Jada was looking for. Yeah. Because she's always talking bad about him. And she's always trying to put him down. Saying you're not a man. You're not this. And you're not that. And it's, it's almost like she doesn't want a man. She just wants a thug. And you know what? That's probably what she was looking for when she had her affair. Yeah. With somebody that looks like a gangster, like a thug, somebody mm -hmm. who is a rapper. So if that's what she's looking for, I'm like, 
my my advice to him, which he's given me so much advice as yeah. an inspirational guy, if I can give him one advice, is bro, let her go. She's toxic. She is a very She's toxic, so toxic person. And you have it's got not, to let her. It's go. not only the cheating, dude. It's not only the cheating. It's the fact that she has this red table show, right? Mm -hmm. And she airs all of her private life on it, all of it. Like her illness, her her affair, her, and you know what's fucked up, man. I think I think Will Smith changed the day that she admitted to him that she had this affair on the show. Did you know that? I saw clips of it. She actually brought him on the fucking show to tell him that she had cheated on him and that she wanted an open relationship. She convinced him to have an open relationship. Because she had already cheated, and she, she, I guess she, she needed to save face. Like, she told him on the show, like she just wasn't happy, and she, she needed to find a way to feel happy again, and that, that, that being with Will was not making her happy, and, you know, it's, I get it, I get it, and some marriages, you know, kind of fall apart or whatever, but right. talk about it, like talk about this. Don't don't just go out and, you know, be be disrespectful to your partner and then make it seem like it's OK. Like, uh, yeah, I just wasn't feeling. No, let okay. me tell you something. The worst thing that people can do, which is what she did, is be unfaithful. And then try to make him feel like it was his fault. Yeah, that's a classic manipulator. It is not your fault. Will, if you're looking at this, it was not your fault that she's a piece of shit. I'm sorry. But at no point is infidelity okay. She's a master manipulator, man. She's a master manipulator. And she has manipulated him into giving her what she wants and having her cake too. Or having the cake and eating it too. Right. Right. So it's like she can do whatever the fuck she wants. And it's interesting because I don't know if you've, if you've read his book, his biography, but no, I I, I've listened to it. Mm -hmm. And this woman has manipulated him since the beginning. Since the beginning, bro, like he, he, he has lived to make this woman happy and she has not done the same for him at she all, hasn't. She at hasn't. all. And what, what struck me is that in the book, he talks about this story and, you know, she, she actually did come up to him and say, you know, I'm not happy, you know, and, and whatever. So he decided one, one year for her birthday, she was going to, he, he's like, I'm going to throw her the biggest fucking birthday. I'm going to show her how much I love her. Right. So he, he goes out, he invites all these celebrities, he goes out and spends all this money, he sets up the, the house for a party, like, it was, it was legit, bro, it was like the biggest fucking party in Hollywood. And when, when she comes in, you can see it in her face that she's not happy. And, it, like, throughout the whole night, like, she just wasn't happy. She just, yep, yep, this is happening. And then after the party, she confronts him about it and says, why the fuck did you do that? And Will is like, what do you, what do you mean? What the fuck did I do that for? Like, I love you. Like I did this for you. Like I, I went through hell to get all these fucking celebrities in this house and, and you know, to make this for right. you. And he's like, I didn't want any of this. And, and you know, I, I hate the spotlight and, and you knew that and blah, blah, blah. And just completely berated him. And after that, after that incident, he was like, you know what? It is no longer my responsibility to make you happy. I would like for this marriage to be both of us happy coming together and being a family already happy. Like, I don't want to be the responsible for your happiness because obviously I don't know what makes you happy. And, and after that is when, when the infidelity started and it's like, if she took that as permission to just go out and do whatever the fuck she wants to be happy, including infidelity, and then bring that back to the, 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 the marriage. And, it's okay. I'm okay with open, open relationships as long as both of them are okay with it. But you can tell when he was being interviewed and he was being told that this had happened because of their open relationship. You can see it in his face, bro. He was hurt. Mm -hmm. He was hurt. He was not okay with that. But he had to be because that's his wife. And he's willing to do whatever the fuck it takes to make her happy. And even though it makes him look like a jackass, and and someone who you know le, le pegan los cuernos like like Puerto Ricans mm -hmm. say like the, this bitch is cheating on you and you know she is and she's gonna keep doing it. Yeah, you gave her the green light yeah. the first time, so what? Why not a second or third or yeah. fourth or fifth time? Like, 
And the, what about all the ones he doesn't know about? The, the dude that she slept with is actually her son's friend, <laughs> which is even worse. Like, and you know, any, anyway, like all this shit happened. And I think Will is a broken man in, on the inside right now. And he just, it, it, it bubbled up to the surface. And it, also in the book, he talks about how from, from his childhood, he witnessed his dad beating his mom and he always holds that in his mind like i'm a fucking coward for not standing up to my mom and that that he says that that one incident has literally defined the rest of his life and he has always tried his hardest to stand up for the women that that he loves to to be that person that that you know even even if uh, you know on and the oscars even if it costs you your your entire right your entire career basically because right now i i think he has ruined the 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 history that was being made at the oscars bro like it was his first oscar ever mm -hmm. the man has been doing hollywood for years he has done an amazing job he should have been nominated way before this but he this was his moment to shine bro like mm -hmm. this was this was it and now everybody's talking about it as a fucking slap yeah, and I, I agree with some of the people that said, you know, when that happened and he went to go sit back down, at what point did the Academy have security? Like, no, nobody even checked up on Chris. Yeah. He was still on stage giving away an nobody award. Nobody and... checked up on him to see, like, bro, are you okay? Like, are, is everything all right? You know what? Security. I'm going to need you to escort Will out of this place. Yeah. Like, listen, I, as much as I love Will Smith and as much as I idolized him and like he was he was my go to for all my motivational stuff. That was not OK. It is never OK to go up on a stage and slap someone in front of millions of people. Self-defense is one thing, but yeah. assault is another. Yeah. And he claimed that it was he was defending his wife. What, what was he defending her from? Jokes. Right. The fuck? Like, it, like you basically just try to take away the first amendment from Chris, you take trying to take away his freedom of speech. That's what words he does. don't mean. I mean every comedian Chris does. is literally every an ambassador does. of the first amendment. Every That's comedian it. do. Yeah. Every comedian out there. And like, he should know that because will is also a comedian. I've right. seen clips of him making fun of bald people all the time. Like, right. uh, like back in the fresh Prince, he used to make fun of people all the time for being bald and for being fat and for being all this shit. Like that's part of the game regardless of what she's going through, mm -hmm. regardless of her illness and the reason why she lost her hair, you are a public figure right. and you're sitting in the front row of a comedy show. There's a comedian on stage and you know that he's known for roasting everybody in the fucking front row. Mm -hmm. You should not have been that offended over a fucking joke. Right. There's, there's no reason for that. And now, you know, it's, <clears throat> There, there's so much I want to say about it, but yeah. And anyway, anyway, he so after the show or after the slap, uh, after the slap happened, he should he should have been escorted out, man. And supposedly, some of the stuff that's coming out now is is saying that he was asked to leave and just refused. He's come out and said that that was not true, or Jada has come out and said that that's not true. Who knows what the fuck happened? But just imagine, bro, like being the person to go go up to Will Smith and say, "Bro, you got to go." <laughs> <laughs> the other comedian that was there, um, I forgot her name. Um, she was there with Chris. Wanda. Wanda. Wanda Sykes, yeah. Wanda. So she went back to her trailer when all this happened. Because I, I saw her on, on Ellen. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about it. She went back to the trailer. She got back in her jammies and stuff. And then she got a call. And I guess she ended up finding out what happened. And she was expecting somebody to tell her, listen... Uh, Will Smith just won this Academy Award, but we need you to go out there. And she was like, I was ready to go out there and be like, so Will Smith couldn't be with us today, but nobody took nobody, him out. Nobody, nobody. If they it would have been him stay there, if they it would have been anybody enjoy. else, if it would have been anybody else in that audience, especially a white person, if a white person would have gotten up and smacked him, he would have been in handcuffs. Oh, yeah. He would have been in fucking handcuffs. Oh, yeah. But because it's Will Smith, BLM, and it's another black dude. Black Lives Matter yeah. would have been all over it, but it was a black dude that smacked another black dude on national television. Black on black crime. Shit about yeah. it. I was like, what? But that was assault, bro. 
That was, was assault. He should have been was. in handcuffs. It was. He should have been in handcuffs. And I and saw. I my saw the question video. is, why would Chris need to be the one to press charges to put him in handcuffs? Assault is assault. Assault is assault, especially when you did it live on TV. Right. Millions of people saw this. Right. Yeah. So in it's recorded, it's going to be around forever mm -hmm. because this is not going to go anywhere. No. But any way you look at it, it was assault. Yeah. So why does anybody need to press charges for him to go to jail for assault? Because he's a celebrity. And you know it's what? A, it's like they play by you different rules, You know who said man. it best? Jim Carrey. Yes. I saw an interview with Jim yes. Carrey. And Jim Carrey said, if that would have been me, the next day he would have been receiving a letter from my attorney. I would have been suing for $200 million. And you know what? I think... I think that's a reasonable price. Yeah, and it's, it's not even about the assault either. Like, it, it's about his reputation. Like, right. he's going to have to live with this video and, and being the person who got slapped by Will Smith for the rest of his life. But you know what? The fact that Chris Rock did nothing, I have more respect towards him. I agree. Than if Chris Rock would have actually swung back. I agree. The no. fact that he just took it like a man, he just, you know what? He's like, wow, Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. And he just took it, didn't even react. He just stayed there, and he continued with the show. And you could see him, because I've seen clips after that when mm -hmm. they were doing other awards, and he would, like, hand over something to somebody, and you can kind of, like, see him, like, looking around, still like, in still shock. in shock, still lost. But the dude never stopped the show, bro. He is such a professional. I, I admire much. Chris even more now. I, like, I've been watching yeah. him since, since back in the day, Me dude. Too. Me too. Like the 90s. Like we've been watching Bigger and Blacker and, and like all his old comedy. I've been following this dude for a long time. And, and, and I didn't realize how professional this dude was. Mm -hmm. Like he, he is a, he is a, sh a, a true showman. Mm -hmm. Like he is born to be on this on that fucking stage because yeah. he, that dude rolled with the fucking punch. He even made a joke about it. Well, he was like, "This is the greatest <laughs> moment in TV history. <laughs> this is the greatest moment of TV and people history. are cracking up laughing." But he's like, he's still trying to figure out like, yeah, what just happened? Yeah. And then I, I guess he, whenever Will started screaming at him, "Take my wife's name out of your effing mouth," he's like, "It was a GI Jane joke." Like he was confused, like right, like why, why did, why did you, you take you do this that? personal? It was as a fucking GI Jane right. joke. Like I wasn't saying anything about her illness. I wasn't saying anything. You I know? don't think he knew. Yeah, no, I don't think so either. He didn't know about her illness. I don't think so either. Until and, afterwards, and, somebody explained it to him. He's like, oh, which is probably why. I don't know if his apology that's been going on around online no, is fake. real. That's fake. It's isn't fake. It? Yeah, he has not, and Will has not reached out to him at all the apology that he posted on instagram was it he hasn't called chris he hasn't been to his house he hasn't tried to make any contact which is fucked up yeah it's fucked up he yeah. needs to do that a real man needs to step up and acknowledge the mm -hmm. fact that you know i messed up yeah i did this and i should not have ever lost myself especially for jada for what yeah like, like what, what was he trying i to understand you're trying to defend your woman and protect your woman but protecting your woman is one thing and losing yourself for someone is another dude honestly put yourself in his shoes like if somebody were to insult your wife you would you would be like okay bro you need you need yeah, to I stop. stood up and went, you need to stop please stop right there that's it right that's it a real man would have been like all right bro like you're, you're taking it too far i think that's enough right not get up and fucking smack the shit out of him that's childish. That's that's Very. West Philly right there. Yeah. He just completely undid his the, his entire life basically, and just went back to the old fucking kid that just mm -hmm. just I got in one little fight and my mom got scared right, <laughs> <laughs> and that was a little fight and now he's having to fucking deal with it man and it, it's crazy. You can't be slapping Chris just because your wife ain't got no hair, <laughs> <laughs> dude. And what what got me is that Jada has actually been to the Oscars before with no hair, before she got alopecia. Mm -hmm. Like that was a hairstyle that she had chosen to 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 wear before, and honestly, like I I like it. I like the bald look on women, like especially when it's not like bald bald. It's just like a little tiny bit of hair. I like it. Like she looked beautiful, and like I said, she had done that haircut before. So it was like Chris was just like, oh okay, yeah, GI Jane, let's go. And supposedly it wasn't in the original script, so it wasn't in any of the rehearsals or anything. That was just something he came up with, with like on the on the fly. But you know what? There were some people that were even talking about that wasn't actually an insult. 
they were talking about they would like to see Jada because she is a really good actor. Yeah, and she's a badass. And there was people that were saying, like, if they were to make a G.I. Jane 2, she would be the perfect character for it because she's got the attitude yeah. for it. So in a way, I don't see that as an, even an insult. I would say that as a compliment. Like, you he know, just called you a badass. <laughs> right. You're a freaking true badass. You have the yeah. you have the the attitude and the determination to be a Navy SEAL if you wanted to. Yeah. Like you are just a badass like that. You don't give a shit what people think. This is what this is who you are. But then and I, I honestly think that even Jada, even though like when you see her reaction, she just rolled kind of rolled her eyes at, at, at the joke and just kind of looked back at him. I think she was just ready to drop it too, man. I, I didn't think it was that big of a deal for her until that happened. <laughs> It was, I, I, I think, and I would love to see footage of after they cut back to Chris, what happened between that mm -hmm. and the slap. Like, that's what I want to see. Like, what triggered him exactly? Because he was laughing. He was. I he mean, was the joke laughing. was funny. Yeah, it was funny. And he, Chris even said, he's like, what? I mean, that was a that good was a one. That was a nice one. Yeah. Anyway, so, and that, that's when he was going to change. He was ready to move on. And then he's like, whoa. Oh. Dude, and the, the problem is that. It, it, it wasn't only what happened. It's the precedence that it sets. Now he's basically telling people that if you don't like someone's joke at a comedy show, it's okay to just go up there and smack the shit out of him. Right. Which it's not. Not at all. <laughs> at all. Words are words. So it, regardless of what they are. But let me tell you something. There's a lot of people that are behind Chris Rock because of this. Oh, big time. Almost every to comedian. To the point where, I, I don't know if anybody knows, but Chris Rock and Kevin Hart are doing a tour. Yeah. The tickets to see Chris Rock were $40 a pop. They just went up to $400 per person, and they are fully sold out. His entire tour is sold out. The entire tour is sold out at $400. i am like, he went from $40 to $400. See, I don't, I don't know because I think $40 mm -hmm. is the, the normal price. I think it, it sold out at $40, and the, the, the prices that we're seeing now is the aftermarket, like people that have tickets and want to resell them. Well, I'll tell you what, I pay 400 just to see what Fuck he's going to yeah, say. I'll pay $1,000. <laughs> I want to see what he's going to be talking about because... Well, he, he actually had a show. That's why I wanted to wait to do the podcast until today is because he actually had a show last night, a comedy show last mm -hmm. night, and he didn't talk about it. At all? Not at all, but like when he came on, and I'll, I'll play the clip for you guys. <laughs> When he came on, uh, he he was cool as shit. He was like, it, he got a two minute standing ovation, bro. Wow, two minutes straight. And he's like, y'all making me misty and shit, man. <laughs> like you're making me emotional because they they would not sit down, bro. They they had such support and love for the man. And uh, when when they finally quieted down, he was like, so how was your weekend? <laughs> and everybody just lost their shit. And he, he basically said, uh, you know, if, if you guys came here to, to, to hear stuff about what happened, that, that's not what I'm going to do. Um, I actually had a whole show written before this past weekend, and I would like to still perform that show for you. And respectfully, like, that's not what I'm here to do. Like, he, he even said, I will eventually talk about the situation, and it will be serious, and it will be funny, but not, tonight is not the night. And I respect the shit out of that, yeah. bro. I respect the shit out of that. The guy it has so much class. And it's it's like you see the two the two opposites, mm -hmm. like the the guy who, you know, just out of emotion, just completely did something out of character, and just completely ruined him and his family's reputation forever. And yeah. then a guy who is like just sitting there taking it, bro. And it's like, yep, that happened, and I'm just gonna move on. And you know, <laughs> yeah, it's almost like my my high level of respect that I had towards Will just got shifted to chris yeah like chris is not a motivational speaker he he doesn't inspire people like as far as motivation and stuff but my motivation is more about a person's character if you can man up to what happened and still hold your composure yeah man 
not only hold your composure bro like he's not going on twitter bashing will he's not you know like which he has every right to absolutely he's got every i mean you know what right now he should be like writing everything he's gonna be saying about jada yep because there's even more shit that you can say about her yeah oh yeah and all the crap about her that nobody said oh yeah it's gonna come out it is it's gonna come out they they actually interviewed chris's brother chris uh i think his name is uh tony rock or is something like that they they interviewed him and they said uh um is will smith's apology enough and he's like nope no it's he's just like, really nope. not and and he's you like need to, uh, you need to really sh- go to chris's house mm-hmm. and have, apologize have in person have a man to him and his entire damn family yeah because he's not just he didn't just disrespect chris dude he disrespected everyone in that audience everyone Everyone. Everyone. He literally sucked the energy out of that room for the rest of the evening. And it, there was so many history making events that were happening. The first deaf person that got an, an Academy <laughs> Award, that was history. The first, uh, uh, you know, the first all black crew that was running the show. Mm-hmm. Like it was the first time ever that the Oscars was an entirely black uh, uh, crew. The, 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 the uh, first all women uh, host. It was the first time all women had hosted the show. And it's like all this shit, Will Smith's first Oscar, all this shit was supposed to happen. And he just literally just sucked the attention out of it. For what? Like, what was he trying to prove? It, it, it definitely was a manipulation, man. And I, I almost feel bad for him. I almost feel bad for Will because he's stuck in this like lose-lose. Like if he stands for up for his wife, he's assaulting someone. But if he doesn't, then he has to live with that at home. Like The thing too is that the way that normal people would have handled it, it would not have been enough for Jada. No, absolutely. She needs ghetto. Absolutely. She needs hood. She needs a piece of shit by her side. She can't. She can't accept a real man. A man that treats her like a queen. Right. Yeah. Like you know how many women out there would love to have a man that treat them like a queen, and this man treats her like a queen, and she just bashes him because he's not fucking Tupac. Yeah. And I, I understand, I, I kind of understand it from his point of view, because when you get into a marriage, it's forever. And, and like, he, he sees this as, okay, I'm, I'm in it, right? Mm-hmm. And I can't get out of it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make her happy however she wants to be happy, even if it costs my own happiness. And that's not, that's that's not right. That's the worst thing you can do. That's not right, man, because you can see he's a broken man. Mm-hmm. He's so broken on the inside, bro. And it's it's pitiful, man. I, I I pity Will Smith right now, and his whole family. I mean, he literally put them under the gun. <laughs> Almost every comedian out there has come out against what he did. Yeah, I mean, honestly, even the people that are like, yeah, I mean, it was about time a black man stuck up for their wife. I mean, you know what? That's not called no. sticking up for your wife. No. No, what he if did, it was self-defense, what, like you said earlier, if right. it was self-defense, if this dude was coming at her or like in her face, like just yelling at her, then I understand. Yeah, bro, throw a fucking punch, get his ass off of her. That's defending. Yeah, that's defending that's your wife. That's protecting, right. But what happened was not that. It was basically bullying. It was bullying and it was, I think it was, it was, it was just multi-level, man. It was the crowd that had reacted like, ooh, and everybody was kind of looking at him and mm-hmm. he, he just felt pressured. Right. To do something. And that's just the first thing that came to his mind. Man, it all really depends, too, because honestly, let's say that the host of the Oscars would have been Mike Tyson. They're, they're saying that, too. Like, if it was The Rock, would you have gone up there and smacked The Rock? He would have no. never done that. No, absolutely not. You did it because he was a smaller dude mm-hmm. and you wanted to assert your dominance on stage. Mm-hmm. And I, I've, I've, I've seen a bunch of people commenting on it, and they're, they're pretty much saying that the people in Hollywood live by different rules, and, and it's, it's because they live in this bubble, right? Like when, when, when you're a celebrity, people kiss your ass, they let you do whatever the fuck you want. You know, when, when you're in a movie, you're acting all these things out, like punching, and, and, and like you think all this stuff is normal, right? So the, what, what people are saying is that maybe, maybe in his mind, he just, he, he blurred the, the, the two worlds together. It's the movies and the real life. And when, when he went up there and, and punched him, he, he was in that character. Like, I'm going to, like, I got to do something, right? And, yeah, it, it, they just lose touch. They lose touch with reality. That's insane. They're living in a different reality. 
And uh, I, I was actually watching a video that just came out today from a different angle, and it was showing uh, it was showing people behind Will's table. So you saw the, you saw the smack and him come back to the seat, but this time you actually saw Jada's reaction, and she was smiling the whole time, bro. She was smiling. She was laughing at when when Chris made a joke about it. She she laughed with everybody. Her and Will never made eye contact after the slap, never for the rest of the show. And it's like, what is happening there? Like, what what kind of marriage is that? <laughs> that very toxic. It's wild. It's wild, and everybody can see it. And I I understand because I've been in toxic relationships, so I understand what it's like to be on the inside of that. It's like you you're you're trying like you've gotten yourself into this man. Like you have kids with this woman. Like, mm -hmm. and it's like they they know that and they have that power over you. But you know what? Let me tell you something. That's the biggest mistake that guys make. They allow the woman to control them using the kids as a little. Yeah. And you cannot allow that. Like, listen, it doesn't matter how much you love your kids. If you want to give your kids a good life, it does not mean keeping them around toxic people, no. even if it's their mom. Yeah. And I'm a prime example of that. Yeah. Because I'm not going to allow my son to be raised in a disaster of a household surrounded by toxic people in a toxic relationship, always arguing and yelling and fighting. And that's not fair for anybody. Putting each other down in front of the kids. Like, that's just not good for any kid. But at what point do you stand up for yourself? For your own self-respect, bro. For your bro. own like, people, sanity. People are looking at him like, bro, you're going to let this woman cheat on you and you're going to let this woman do right. this? And, and like, Right. Like, it, at what point do you become a man and be like, listen, I'm worth more than that. Yeah. I am worth more than what I'm receiving. My mental health is way more important exactly. than, than what's happening here. <laughs> and That's the kids, it. too. The kids. Like, Jaden has had to deal with her mom sleeping with her own friend. Like, that's got to be fucked up. Like, my mom cheated on my, on my dad with one of my friends. <laughs> like, right. that's got to be fucked up for a, for a kid. Like, and, at what point do you even think of your consequences? Yeah. So, clearly, she's not like, thinking the of line? anything. Like, right. where's the line? She There's has gotta, no boundaries. Yes, yeah, at all. She has no boundaries. At all. So, she shouldn't be married, period. Exactly. If you don't, if you want to live without boundary, boundaries, if you want to be free and you want to go be happy, go be happy. If I'm not, if I'm not doing that for you, go. Right. But I don't have to be dragged along with it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's not what I'm here to do. I'm not a punching bag, which is what Will Smith has become, unfortunately. He's just, he's just Jada's punching bag. That sucks. Yeah, and, and I, I honestly think that even the, that red table talk or whatever, it wouldn't be as famous if she wasn't married to Will. Like, she would He's be no one. That made her famous. Yeah, she would be no one right now. I mean, she was, she was doing acting before, mm -hmm. right? And she was doing music and all that shit, and she was doing her own thing. But She owes no, her career to him. <laughs> nowhere near what she is today. She owes her career to him, and he is basically throwing away his career for, for her. her. Yeah. Which really sucks. And out of all the hard work that this man has gone through, bro, like I've, I've heard his story. Like I can relate, you know, like this, this dude busted his ass. He had to work against the grain back when black people weren't even allowed to be on TV. Like the motherfucker started a sitcom. Like the dude has been a pioneer since the beginning. The dude has, has been a hustler, has been an inspiration to millions of people, including you and I. Mm -hmm. And then for him to do this, it just completely discredits everything that he's done. It almost makes you think like, who's the real Will Smith? Like what, what we've heard and what we've seen is probably just a persona. It's probably just a little character that he's kind of built for himself. But the real Will Smith came out. That was, that was absolutely 100% real Will Smith right there, unfortunately. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, that's wild, man. Now uh, the Academy is actually uh, starting an investigation, and they're going to see what, what consequences. Bro, the consequences should have been that night. Right. It should have been immediately after that shit happened. They should have stopped the show. They shouldn't have kept going at all. They should have just cut the commercials, got that motherfucker out of his seat, and then come back and said, okay, we're, we're, we're back, right? But no, man, they kept that shit going. And I think it's for the ratings, honestly. People are saying it's for the – because the Oscars have been – 
suffering in, in the ratings department for years. And uh, I'm sure the producer was like, if we kick Will Smith out right now, we're going to lose a shit ton of viewership. Right. <laughs> so it's like, it, it, it's almost like, like, uh, like Jim Carrey said, I was just about to say Hollywood that. has become spineless, spineless. They don't care. Like uh, uh, it's all about the numbers. It's all about the viewership. It's all about that clout. And it's, it, it's literally all it is. Human emotions take a, a back seat to that. Mm -hmm. And that's what you get. That's the kind of shit that you get. I, I love Jim Carrey, man. He he said he put it right on the nose. Jim Carrey is one of those guys that he doesn't give a shit who you yeah. are. He'll let you know exactly how yep. it is. He does not hold back. And I mm -hmm. love that about him. Yeah, me too. It's white and black with him. Me There's too. no gray area. And if it's right, it's right. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. And he doesn't care who you are. Mm -hmm. That was not right. Yeah, my, my favorite quote from him is, uh, I wish everyone can be rich and famous so that they see that that's not the goal. That's not what's going to make you happy. Because he, he went through the journey, yeah. man. Like, he, he went through the Hollywood and he tried to be politically correct. Now he doesn't give a fuck because he's Jim Carrey, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but yeah, man, like, you, you, maintain, you maintain composure when something like that happens. Like, it, it, it just was not okay, man. It was just an unfortunate incident and it just happened to be on the biggest stage in the world <laughs> that's insane that's wild yeah we're, we're probably gonna uh keep following this story and you know like i said this podcast isn't it isn't really about like gossip or shit that happens in hollywood uh, it's not about that it's about you know a person that we looked up to uh an inspiration you know i started this podcast to inspire other people to be better to follow their dreams you know and and we talk about will smith all the time because he, his words <laughs> got me to where I am today. You know, he inspired me like seeing the hustle and seeing all the shit that he was able to do and see all, all the shit that he was able to accomplish with the talent that he was given at birth. Like it's inspiring. It's, it really is. And it, you know, it just, just to see something like that, it's just sad, man. It's just sad. And I'm not going to say I'm going to boycott Will Smith. Cause I'm, I'm sure he, I mean, it was a mistake. Well, that's, that's mistake. another thing. We, we all make mistakes. Yeah. Nobody Everybody makes perfect. mistakes. Nobody is perfect. So you can't just keep bashing Will for what yeah. he did. But I am going to hold him up. Accountable. To what he did. Absolutely. He has to be accountable. I'm not going to keep bashing him or saying like, dude, you, you messed up. He knows he fucked up. Right. He knows that. But we need to see a sincere apology, and he's going to need to step up to Chris and his family. Bro, the time for that fucking apology was on stage when he was giving that acceptance he speech. Did not do it. He apologized to everyone else but Chris. That's what got me, bro. It's like he, he still had this shit that, like, I did the right thing. He yes. still had that in his mind. And that, that's not okay, man. That the time for the apology was there that night, or or backstage. He could have just walked up to to him backstage and been like, "Look, bro, you know, I, I was out of line, and I'm sorry, bro. Like, we need to squash this shit, like like men, right?" Mm -hmm. But no, he decided to just pretend like it didn't happen. Literally, he pretended like nothing happened. Right. He was still laughing at the jokes. He was still going up there, man, and, enjoying know. the show. Went up there, and gave after, a speech, came out, sat back down. Yeah. Yeah, he was sitting there holding his Oscar, and a afterwards, uh, they they actually recorded him at a, like a private event, a private party, and he was just sitting there, just singing and dancing, a bunch of a, a bunch of people, and just kind of holding up his Oscar, just having a good old time. And I'm sure Chris Rock was looking at that like, motherfucker, mm -hmm. like this is not okay, <laughs> this is not okay. But yeah, we'll we'll see what happens, man. We'll see if if he actually grows some balls and you know goes up to Chris and apologizes because he's gonna have to do something special. They they should go into a slap Olympics just <laughs> just smack the shit out of each other. <laughs> I've seen those slap contests. Yeah, hell yeah. But yeah, no the uh, he's gonna definitely have to do something special. Like the way that I see it. Is if you did if you went as far as having the biggest party in Hollywood for the piece of shit that you married, bro, you're gonna have to do something bigger than that, bigger than for your Chris. wedding with yeah. her, bigger than anything you've done for her, for him and his family. Yeah, because you didn't just disrespect Chris, you disrespected his family, too. his entire brand. Because his let me team, let me his... tell you something, you're in the movie industry, and if I were to see anybody. Even him, even Will Smith, he's one of my idols. 
walk up there and smack you, I would have been the one in handcuffs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Easy. I would have lost my shit. <laughs> Rest assured <laughs> that he would have not had even the yeah. chance to turn back around to get to his seat because I would have been on stage knocking him out faster than you can probably even snap your fingers. You can see, you can see when they play the slap in slow motion, Chris Rock turned his head obviously because he got he got slapped but his right fist was already balled up coming up and his left hand came up to block so if if will would have stayed on stage there would have been a brawl bro there would have been a fist fight on the fucking stage at the oscars but because will smith turned around i it, it's probably because he realized how fucked up what just happened was mm -hmm. and he was trying to save face and and you know just go back to his seat but he was ready bro like for a split second you could see that fist ball up and then he goes back to the 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 class act that the motherfucker is mm -hmm. with his hands behind his back and so just, highly respected. Oh my god, I love I love Chris Rock now. Yeah. <laughs> if I loved him before, but now he's he's my fucking idol, man. <laughs> it, that took a real man to just yeah take it in and not ruin everybody's night. Yeah, and just keep the show going, bro. Because right. he had every right to walk off that stage. Mm -hmm. He had every right to do that, <laughs> and just completely like you know what I'm not doing this shit. Like I. If it was me, I would have stopped the show. I would have been like, security, I, I need him out. Like, in front of everybody. Like, is security not going to do anything? They didn't do anything. They didn't do shit. Yeah. They didn't do a damn thing. And it was because he was Will Smith, bro. He, it was because he was a celebrity. Like, if I was the security guard there, I would be afraid to go up to Will, especially after what just happened. Like, the, the dude's enraged. That was 100% rage mm -hmm. that was coming from that dude. And going, going up to him afterwards, be like, bro, you got to get out. I, I I probably couldn't do it. <laughs> I would have had no problem if I was working security. Yeah. <laughs> but Will, you gotta go. Get bro. the fuck out. Get up. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm if surprised. it's true that they asked him to leave and he didn't want to, it would have been a whole. That'll other be thing. interesting to find out. I'm sure the, the investigation <laughs> like, Listen, will. We need to go to commercial yeah. break. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was the producer. The producer should have just cut away. Mm -hmm. And and during you know what got me, bro, <laughs> is. Throughout the whole night, they were they were you know giving away awards and the people were giving their speeches. And after they they reach a, like a certain point or or how long it was, they would cut them off. They would, like the music would start and they would be walked off the stage. Will Smith gave a five minute speech, uninterrupted. Two standing ovations from the audience. That that just that just did it for me, bro. <laughs> it was like they're glorifying this man's but violence that's what, what jim carrey said they're spineless hollywood is spineless yeah and, and i, I get it man i get it these people have grown up with will they've seen him on tv for such a long time i mean and and all the people in that audience have worked with him so it's like it, that's his second family so i i get that there was a little bit of hesitation but bro assault is assault mm -hmm. assault is assault they kicked uh a kanye out of the grammys they won't allow him back because he just walked up on stage and grabbed the mic. That's it. Now what the, what the fuck are they going to do with, with a slap, an assault? I don't know, man. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what the, what the investigation comes back with because I'm sure there's all kinds of footage from every camera. <laughs> every single camera was rolling. So I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of footage of, of exactly what happened, what triggered, and, you know, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Hopefully his his career can survive this honestly because I I really like Will bro he's he's you know even after all this shit like <laughs> you can't negate his entire life because of one accident but you know and we like, all make mistakes yeah nobody's perfect nobody's he, perfect he needs to he needs to he own, needs up, to to own up to it yeah and then face the consequences <laughs> dude honestly if I if I was Chris Rock I would have pressed charges honestly. Well, it's never too late. Yeah, he still has what six weeks? I don't know to to file. Yeah, I so he's know. still. I'm I'm sure that's why he hasn't said anything publicly because he's still talking to his lawyers about what he can do. Like I can what? See that. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe after the lawsuit or whatever is over, that's when he's going to be ready to talk. Yeah, yeah. After it all blows over, because right now it's it's probably a legal matter now. Mm -hmm. it's his his lawyers probably told him like no you can't talk about it publicly until until right. everything's you know it's wild man it's wild and i i hope he can recover i hope i really do for him and his family's sake at least for his family's sake 
So all the episodes that we talked about Will Smith, uh, we're, we're going to leave those up because, you know. <laughs> what he used to say yes. was inspiring, even if he didn't live up to that that night. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? Let, let's give him a little bit of, of a break because, you know, he's he is going through a lot right now. He is broken. He is broken. and, and He is broken. And I don't see him finding help as long as he keeps her toxic ass around. Yeah. Yeah, because he's still living in that little bubble of I gotta make her happy. I gotta make her happy. I gotta make her happy. He's not. He's not out here listening to us, you know, talking about this fucking toxic relationship. And and I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. And that it's it's funny. Before we leave, I wanna I wanna touch on one other point because in his in his um, biography, he talks so much about that one incident where his dad hit his mom and and like caused her to bleed and shit. And that was very traumatic for him. But now he did that for everyone else, for all the kids that watched him do that. He literally created the same thing that he was trying to Everything he overcome. was traumatized about. Yeah, all the trauma and shit that he had gone through, he just literally did it for his, his own kids. His children. Now. His own kids yeah. saw that. My kids saw that. Like everyone, like literally the whole world has seen this fucking slap. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know, man. Yeah, he just basically recreated what happened to him as a child and on live made TV. himself Way responsible worse. to do it to other kids now. Way worse, yeah. he's ba He basically gave a green light to people so that if, if somebody offends you, it's okay to go up to them and slap them. Right. That, I'm sure that's what some of the kids are, are feeling, <laughs> especially some of the, a lot of the people that are defending the violence. They're saying, yeah, he, he should have he done it with a close fist. Or, you know, that that was such disrespect, and I'm, I'm glad he stood up for his wife, and blah, 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 blah. Nah, bro. Nah, Anybody bro. Anybody who is for Will Smith... For the violence. For the violence has problems. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a deep-seated problem in there. Right. Because if, if you think resorting to violence because of some words is Then you don't believe okay. in the United States Constitution. Yeah, there's no freedom of speech. Right. There's no freedom of speech. So know. anybody that disagrees with you, it's okay to just go up to them and smack the shit out of them. No, that's not okay. That is not okay. And I'm, I'm saying this publicly right now. If somebody comes up to me and slaps me, I am pressing charges. I don't give a fuck who you are. If it's the president of the United States, you motherfuckers are going to be in handcuffs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. That was the, the biggest disrespect yeah. I have ever seen. And no, that, that is not okay. That is not okay. And why didn't he choose to do it privately, you know, after? Just go up to him and be like, blah, and just backstage. No, he had to do it because right then Jada and there. Yeah. wanted that gangster to come out. Yeah. I I, I can I can blame it ninety percent on her. Yeah, it's gotta be. It's gotta be. It's and that ten percent was he had a choice. Yeah. And unfortunately that was a choice that he made. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you and I know what it's like to to react to something emotionally. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes you're like, Oh shit, like it scared me a little bit. <laughs> Like sometimes I'll I'll lash out sometimes and I'll be like oh shit where did that come from and it's like I, I get it you know when when you get to that point but why did it have to get to that point and why did Chris Rock have to take the blunt of your family problems right <laughs> like he had nothing to do with it mm -hmm. so yeah I'll I'll tell you honestly because out of everybody in our entire family both sides mom and dad side I think I have the hottest head and I have the worst temper yeah you do. And <laughs> <laughs> I've always had the worst temper. Like even in high school, I was always in fights. And like I used to look forward to that violence. And now as an adult, I'm like, man, like that doesn't get you anything. And me having as bad temper as I've always had in my entire life to be able to acknowledge, you know, that was not OK. Somebody with his temper should have been able to control it. Agreed. Agreed. Because with my temper, I could have been like, you know what? This isn't the time this or place. Not, yeah, this is not okay. So for <laughs> him to do it, there's something behind it. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, wasn't him. Sure. That wasn't just him. For sure. Yeah, he, he went back to being the old, the old Will Smith, man. The guy that just, from Philly, if you talk bad about me, I'm going to punch you in the mouth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> On TikTok, there's actually a, a quote going around that said, um, like, I don't know why people tell everyone to just just be nice. Like, no, you should become a monster. 
you should become a fucking monster and then learn how to control it because that's how you're going to get through life. Mm -hmm. If if you're just a nice person the whole time, yeah, people are going to run all over you. Yeah. But you should learn how to become that monster, that inner monster that's inside of you and then control it. Because if you can't control it, there's, you know, it's going to get you in trouble. But yeah, I'm going to I'm going to play that clip because that that's so good. It's, you know, it's okay to become that monster because then you get the respect of people. Like you, you know when somebody crosses the line, they're not going to cross that line again. Mm -hmm. But it's like you have to have that self-control not to let it get out of hand because you're going to end up in handcuffs. Mm -hmm. You're going to end up either dead or dead. It's one of the two. Yeah, that's one of the things that mom used to tell me growing up that she's like the best thing I could have done is move to the United States because if we were still living in Puerto Rico with my temper, I'd either be locked up or, or dead. dead. Yeah. yeah. Or, I've even told her that or before. Or lost. <laughs> or lost. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been completely different. And it's it's about the environment too, bro. It's mm -hmm. like the environment that you grow up in that, that kind of shapes you. It, it you know. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll we'll stay uh we'll stay connected and um, you know, we'll 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 see what comes out of this. Hopefully the Academy does throw him out because I don't think he should be on that stage again. But, you know, hopefully he still gets hired for movies and shit. Cause now, now that's going to be a stain on his, his reputation mm -hmm. when he goes to, to, to get scripts, he's not going to get the same scripts he was before. Right. So I don't know. Yeah. It, it'll be interesting to see the long term effect of that. Especially if they're going to do another movie about a true story, mm -hmm. they're not going to want him representing exactly the father. Yeah. In a movie. Yeah. Let's say that he would have, this would have happened before the King movie. King Richard, yeah. They would not have picked him. Probably not. No. As the father in King Richard. Yeah. Because, yes, King Richard was a fierce defender of his family, like he said in his speech. Yes. Yeah. But he still had control. Yeah. <laughs> he still had self control. Yes. Which is exactly what Will did not have. The have other you night. seen the movie? I have not. You have not seen the movie? No. Oh, dude, it's so good. Like, he gets the shit beat out of him because he tries to stand up for one of his daughters. And these two gangsters just beat the shit out of him. So he goes home beat up. In no way did he fight back. So I don't know what he was trying to do, what he was trying to make that comparison that King Richard was a fierce, de yeah, he was a fierce defender vocally. He never got physical. He never beat up someone for his family or cause any physical harm. or cause any physical harm to anybody it doesn't matter who it was like he was a good guy and yeah he was a fierce defender but like with words right yeah. legally legally yeah without without committing an, a, a a crime on live tv in front of millions of people <laughs> like uh yeah we're gonna end it there man <laughs> we've been going on for a while over an hour now so um yeah so un until next time uh this has been a bonus a bonus episode uh we we will release a regular episode on sunday so uh, be on the lookout for that this was just like a one-off uh we just had to get on here and talk about it so thanks again to alex the barber for joining me thank you for having me thank absolutely having me. man yeah we'll, we'll we'll see you guys next time thank you for watching Ciao.